What's up, everyone? Man, it's been a while since I vlogged. So, man, dude, I had to come out with a new one because I know it's been a while. So, listen, if there's anything that I've learned within my entrepreneurial self development journey, it's that it's the emphasis and importance of building relationships and putting yourself in the proximity of like minded individuals. But not just like minded individuals, actual doers, right? People who actually do the things that they say, people who hold themselves to high standards, and people who involuntarily and voluntarily become your accountability partners, right? You know, uh, studies have shown that, you know, you are a byproduct of your environment. And, you know, I hate to sound cliche, but it is so true. You be, you are, you do become the people, you know, the people you surround yourself with. I think the, what is that saying? Like you, the five people you surround yourself with is who you become, right? So with that being said, um, it's around 6 a.m. We're on the way to self-made training facility in West Covina. My good friend Jason Tam, the owner, was kind enough to let us uh, uh, get a workout in at their facility. A uh, couple of the homies, uh, some that you may recognize from the podcast will be there. And I thought it'd just be a great idea to bring everyone together, get a workout in, but also at the same time introduce some of the people who don't know each other. I think one of the things that a lot of people misinterpret or you know, kind of get the wrong impression when it comes to networking building relationships is that you know they kind of wait for it to come to them right like okay I, yeah i'm gonna build these relationships i'm gonna surround myself with like-minded individuals and things like that i think people need to actually realize that you need to take initiative so a simple thing just like this is getting people to work out you know what i mean so i got i gathered everyone together so like, hey look let's just go get a workout in and um, you know just being in the proximity of these amazing people these innovative people who are doing some amazing things and um, you know uh, share some uh, meaningful conversation get a, a good workout in and um, just go from there so I think it's very important and um, yeah we're about to get this workout in let's get it boom I've been so impressed by you is you know we just had your grant your grant opening for location Amazing. prior to that I felt like this place has been established for almost like two to three years ah that's the plan yeah dude how have you been able to build this community and like you know, um, you know your personal trainers you've gathered like such a great community how have you been able to build that prior to your freaking grand opening I think prior to the grand opening, the biggest thing is telling my story. I've been in the industry for 15 plus years. I've ran open gyms, I've been a district manager. So people relate to people that are in the industry. So when people see my story and my struggles from becoming a private trainer to a corporate trainer or vice versa, they go, okay, this guy can help me further my career because he's been there. So when I reach out to trainers, I don't do the generic, hey, I'm opening a gym. I say, hey, I like what you're doing with the business. How can we partner together? So that took to a lot of the trainers in the area. They're like, well, this is my ideas of how I want to expand my brand. How can I expand that within South Bay? It's almost like an exchange of value. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like I tell everybody, we don't hire anybody. It's a partnership. So I have to see if even you, you work with me, I work with you. I want you to see if we're going to be good partners. You know, it's like a relationship, like uh, my wife and I, you know, we had a date for a while, we're compatible, She, you know, we got married. So when I meet with a trainer, I always tell them, just be your most authentic self. Tell me what your business is like, tell me what you're doing, tell me how much you're charging, and I'll tell you what I can do for you. And if it works, it works, then thank God, 45 trainers later, it works, so. Yeah, and yeah. The, the first facility to open within the LA area? We're the first one in the, uh, LA County. LA so County. I know we have more coming, but we're the first ones to break ground. So a lot of uh, clients in the area were really interested to see what we had to offer. So for me, it was creating the buzz and the culture that Miguel had already put forth. And I just took my own little spin on it. And I mean, the grand opening was 300 plus people. 
doesn't We're gonna plus people. Yeah. I don't know if you remember when we uh, did some boxing up, up right, there. Right, uh -huh. One of the things that we spoke about was uh, that partnership. And yeah. I think one of the things is sometimes like ownership or the owners or CEO, whoever it may be, they almost like want to have the sense of authority over people. But then we spoke about like, no, like when you have people under you or quote unquote under you, it's not about like, oh, you work for me. No, you work right. with me. 100%. And I think that's a, that, that speaks on behalf of this culture. And that's just why I come here to this specific uh, location. You know we appreciate I mean? you, yeah, that's, yeah. And that's why I love you here, man. So I appreciate you. Be on the lookout for Gation Tan going to be on the podcast next week. Can't wait Let's go. Here, Let's go, Vina, South Maine. You guys all recognize him, episode two. So my dude, my guy, he's had quite the journey, man. He lost a lot of weight, and he started a meal prep company, and not only did he do that, now he has some restaurants, and he's about to sell some franchise locations, doing a lot of good things. Dude, if there's anything I know about you, it's that you've been very consistent. You're very consistent with your, you know, your fitness life, and now with your business. How many years of your business have you been going now? Five years now. Five years? Dude, what's, what's the thing that's keeping really you consistent <laughs> with your discipline, man? I go to bed. I got a dream. I want to take care of my family. I want to try to do that life, like, that life that I want, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, family's a big thing, man. I want to take care of my family. That's, that's, yeah. That's the main goal. Yeah, yeah, dude. Is this, um, dude, man, so how, how soon can we expect for everything to just fall right in, dude? Like, what? Uh, 2020? 2020 is your year? Yep. Oh, man, dude. Manifestations happening right now, man. Let's go, baby. <laughs> appreciate, appreciate you. Man. Always appreciate you, man. Yeah. This is why he's doing sports performance products, man. So, Jay, let's go. There he is. Woo! Woo! All right, so Andrew Cruz, if you guys don't recognize him, he's from episode 39. Dude, this guy has his hands in multiple things. I almost feel compelled to fucking call you like the cookie monster because you got your hands in so many jars or you know so many businesses. Olive Draft, the photo booth company, your your ATM business, and now a new franchise owner for Eastfield for the um, for uh, the camp transformation. Dude, man, how do you do it, dude? Like, what compels you to like you know take on like a new business or project? Is it really like adding like the numbers have to add up, or what compels you to go and dive into these different businesses? So, so going from one business to the other, it's really been one business has fed to another larger business, uh, just to ma maximize capital or revenue, but also with, with that comes the impact piece as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, old, the ultimate goal is really taking care of my family, but everything started out with the ATM business. Mm -hmm. The ATM business, if I were to put a bar graph on, on like revenue, yeah. it's like the ATM business was here, and then it fed into the photo booth guy, and then the photo booth guy was here, and then between the ATM and the, and the photo booth, it fed into all of your apps. Yeah. And then it really circles back to ATM and photo booth that has set me up to get, get a camp. So almost like the their initial business funded yeah. their new venture. Okay. Yes. So I'm starting, I'm starting to see where where many where entrepreneurs will have many different businesses, yeah. and it's not necessarily that, that some are failures, some are just not as big as others can be. Yeah. Right. So I, I I I've had a few dips, but overall, big picture, it's been a good it's been a good ride, and it's a great experience, and it really was just one step after another. Sort of say like uh, patiently impatient. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Uh, I almost think what you're doing is smart too because it's almost as if you're diversifying your portfolio a little bit. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be getting into real estate soon and some other stuff as well. Yeah. Oh, but man. Oh, man, Andrew Cruz, brother. No relation. No relation. <laughs> Probably some relation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. So original OG RTA member, but dude, this guy, I've known him for a little over a year now, and he's starting his new company, RSA. RSA? RSA. RSA. My bad. I always say that. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, sports performance products. He's coming out with some amazing stuff, dude. I remember when he first just talked about the concept and everything he's been showing me, like a lot of behind the scenes stuff from the engineering to launch to all the other products he has going. Fucking super excited. Be on the lookout for this guy. But the one thing I wanted to ask you, dude, like, I remember you kept telling me, like, bro, I didn't know how to do anything, like, anything. And how have you been able, from not knowing all that stuff, all that foreign territory, not knowing that knowledge, how, how have you been able to be so resourceful? Uh, well, probably for me, the number one thing is 
the reason why I'm doing it. Um, because, so my, my, I'm doing all this for my parents. Like, I want more than anything to retire them because they made some, you know, bad investments back in 2008, uh, like a lot of people did. And so every day I'm just motivated to just do whatever it takes to, uh, you know, free them from having to worry about like where money's coming from and all that. So when I encounter any problem, it's either do or die, you know? Yeah. Like, so no matter what it is, I'm gonna stay up all night to like look it up. I'm gonna ask people, I'm gonna yeah. spend money to, to get help. So no matter the how, it doesn't yeah. matter the how, you're just gonna fucking do it. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, basically I'll, I'll die and end up on the street before I like give up, you know? It's yeah. kind of, and, it, and when you think like that, like you automatically become super resourceful. Yeah. You know? Like, like you just figure out a way. You'll find a way. You have to, there's, there's no other option. That's kind of like human behavior, like yeah. we adapt and we evolve. And, and I, I do gotta say one thing I remember is like, bro, like I Googled almost everything. Yeah, I mean, we're so blessed because we have the internet and everything and like, like 20 years ago, like I admired those guys who did it without- Without all that like, stuff. Without yeah. being able to like just search things. And now we're just like, oh, I don't know how to do this. And you search it up. You don't know, you just call someone, yeah. you know, or you send some emails. It's like doing homework or doing a report. Like you just have to put in the time. Like if you want to find the answer to something, it might take like three hours yeah. to find it on Google, but you eventually will find it and it's all going to become trial and error from there. Sounds like. Exactly. I mean, all the answers are there. It's just, you got to commit to searching for it and just believing that you'll figure out no matter what, you know? So I appreciate you. Be on the lookout for his brand dude. I'm so excited again. I have been had the honor to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff and because I've known him since he started the concept, I'm fucking super excited. I can have a thousand followers, but I can have a million in sales based yeah. off of those a thousand followers. Exactly. Look bro, if you don't know how to sell to a thousand people, you're not gonna know how to sell to a million people. Yeah. That's fucking period. Ooh, you know what I mean? You could just be around somebody who has an influence, whether it's someone as big as Sam or someone, you know, even like small just starting out. If you could just be there, you'll never know who you're gonna run into and where that might lead to or what conversations you guys will have. I bet you have the most amazing conversations when you work out with Sam and whoever else he's around. Yeah, man. Yeah, That's good, man. You know, you know, it's wild. It, it it goes to show that the opportunities in the show up, right? The show up. Yes. Opportunities in the show up. It's not about like we don't care about the how, because people like us, we just do it. Yeah. But then like it's also good what you said too. But now like to get that inside of how too, because everyone's thought process is a little different, especially depending yeah. on the industry. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. You may see it like a totally different perspective that like. Yeah. That you weren't even thinking of if you were gonna do the same thing, you know? Yeah. And it's like, oh shoot, like that was another way to do it. Yo, can we take a minute to re recognize this guy though? <laughs> He's been on freaking fire. What, 40 something episodes now? Holding it on 50. 50 episodes on his podcast. He's an inspiration every day, man. I appreciate you. I can't wait to have you on the podcast too whenever you're ready. You know that. Yeah.